death and destruction. <laughs> now I'm probably get some terrible disease. Okay, we are in the infamous Slab City, California, and this is The Range, one of their outdoor music venues. The foundation I'm walking up right now is actually an old leftover foundation from the former military base that used to be here in the 1940s. And then when the Marines decommissioned this area, they left it to the state of California to figure out what they wanted to do with the land. They ended up doing nothing, and now it's become this transient community that's completely off the grid. So these slabs, leftover foundations, became the basis of Slab City. It's a quirky, weird little place. stand in front of the Salton Sea, which is by far the weirdest body of water we've ever seen. It was actually created by accident in 1905 when the California Development Company was creating irrigation canals from the Colorado River to irrigate some land. Well, one of the canals was actually breached by floodwaters coming off the Colorado River, and it eventually made all of the river's water flow into this valley. So it carved the landscape so deep for over 16 months. Eventually, they were able to get the water back on its natural path, plug that canal wall back up, but the damage was done, and they created a new body of water called the Salton Sea. And this is a really low area. We're actually 125 feet below sea level. So it traditionally had been an overspill for the Colorado River, but never to this magnitude. And so it created this huge lake in the middle of the desert. And so the 1950s, movie stars, Sonny Bono, all kinds of people would come here, water ski, have fun, and these little beach towns started popping up along the sea. Well, the only way for water to leave this sea is through evaporation. And so over time, more and more water is leaving and the water is getting more and more saline. So it's salty, it's smelly, the shoreline's receding and it's exposing these barnacles and dead fish and all kinds of really gross stuff. And so all of these beach towns have now busted and they're really not in good shape. There's been lots of different ideas for a revitalization plan for the sea. There hasn't been one agreed upon way to keep this body of water usable by humans and also by animals, especially the mig migratory birds that use it as a stop off on their way from North to South America.
groundwater except for what we would consider brac or seepage water out of our canals. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unusable. So everything that we have, we rely solely on the Colorado River coming into this area. Yeah. The biggest crop that we have is alfalfa. And, um, but we do have a top 10, so that, I'm going off the top of my head here, mm -hmm. so um, alfalfa, and then all of our uh, vegetable crops like carrots, lettuce, and one crop that's becoming, it's not actually one crop, but one um, method of farming that we're, has, has gained more and more traction over the last couple of years is these 84 inch beds that they um, sprinkle with all through the growing season. And they grow a variety of um, small leaf spring mix, they call it. So there's red lettuce, green lettuce, spinach. And so that's also a big um, portion of the top 10. And we have the broccoli and the cauliflower. And then we have um, several um, field crops that are um, big acreage users like wheat and sedan. So that's probably the, the biggest ones. In the wintertime this time of year, 70%, 70 to 80% of all the vegetables that this nation takes in is grown here or in Yuma. You failed to mention uh, beef. It's not really a crop, oh. but when you look at the county ag report, it's the, one of the highest. Well, we've passed some of the farms too. Yeah. Right, so you'll see feedlots. Mm -hmm. So it is our biggest um, money producer right. in, of the valley is, is beef. So the alfalfa that you're growing, that's the main crop, and that's going to those feedlots? Um, actually, that alfalfa goes all over. Local feedlots don't use uh, just alfalfa. There's bread meal they put in, there's oats. So they have a feed mix that they're feeding for. Some of that may take in ryegrass, some of it may take in some uh, Bermuda hay. Mm -hmm. So it's not just alfalfa. Gotcha. So the alfalfa, the high quality stuff that y'all grow, is mostly going to Dairies. High quality dairy. Correct. Every year our hay goes further and further up into California, oh. clear up into Sacramento. Um, there's times that um, I'd be willing to bet that 70% of the alfalfa that's grown here, maybe 75, um, supports the rest of California dairies. There's several ways that excess water is generated. The one that everybody's going to target is what we call tailwater which is what comes off the end of the field on your flood irrigations or your furrow irrigations. With sprinklers, there's none. With drip, there's none. But, you know, flood irrigation, because of our efficiency, as I explained, is not going to go away. But it is going to be the low fruit that everybody's going to target, and the salt and sea will suffer. And as that salt and sea dries up, um, that land is going to be exposed, and that uh, causes a lot of concern. It causes... Uh, uh, concern to the environment, the birds and the fish, the wildlife that are going to suffer, and then the dust exposure to the public, right. which is a major concern. So Imperial Irrigation is doing all it can to, to get the message out about this and get public support. As you can see, the solution to save the man-made Salton Sea is still an unknown. The Imperial Irrigation District is the largest single user of the Colorado River. Three million acre feet of water per year is allocated to them as part of California's four million acre feet that was dedicated to them in the Colorado River Compact of 1922. So people have been targeting the Imperial Irrigation District to use less water. San Diego, LA, they want to buy more water, but that's led to improved irrigation techniques like tile drip systems and sprinkler systems but that also has reduced flows to the Salton Sea. Flood irrigation still uses the most water but it also contributes the most water to maintain the levels of the Salton Sea. There is an amount required to enter the Salton Sea each year but with cities wanting to purchase more with irrigation techniques getting more efficient what does that mean for the Salton Sea? We left Salton City in the Imperial Valley to continue our trip south of the border into Mexico. 
We got a ride with our new friend Ruli, who is going to visit his mom in Mexicali. There he dropped us off south of the city limits to begin our bicycle trip through Baja, California.